Hey everybody, Dr. Robin McKay here and welcome to this week's weather report and pep talk. This is your actualization zone, YouTube. I don't know where else we have this. I don't think we have it on the podcast yet, but every week I come in and I do a weather check. And what I mean by that, for those of you who are new to me, new to my work, is that I have the ability to tune into the subtle energies, to the emotions, to the to the potentials of what are coming through this week. And I like to share that with my clients who I work with privately. I will be sharing that more and more frequently as the McKay Academy of Actualization starts to move forward. We are in waitlist mode right now and we'll be announcing the starting of that for the first cohort soon. Until then, you're in the actualization zone on Facebook, and I'm so happy that you're here. If you're here with me live, say hello in the comments. If you're watching the recording, I'd love to hear from you as well. Any top takeaways, anything that stands out for you as important for you as you go about your day, week, and month this this at this time in the world. So with that in mind, let me see here. Let's go ahead and breathe in and breathe out and just bring yourself into the present moment. Notice where your feet are. Notice where your hips are. And then notice your breath. You know, I believe that intuitive and intelligent people have the capacity, like I do, to tune into the subtle energies, to the emotions, to the potentials of what's coming down the pipe this week. But in order to be able to do that, you have to move from your head into your heart. And it's vital that you spend some time in the present moment. And that's why it's so important just to notice, notice where you are right now, right now. All right. So let's see this week. I'm looking down at these cards that I pulled from a different deck this week. They are, I don't have it in front of me. I'll post it in the comments, but they're all, it's all about crystals, the, the crystal frequencies. So this week is all about communication and boundaries, communication and boundaries. I have said for a long time that it's very difficult to be a such a nice person and also to be a good leader. And there are those of you who are in my inner circle who have been in my sphere for a while. Y'all are just such nice people. You're agreeable. You want to do the right thing. You're trusting. You're trustworthy. You're oftentimes more willing to do what other people ask you to do than the normal or the general population. And so this one is really for you all, just about tuning into what are my boundaries? Boundaries are rules or laws that you set up for yourself. And then the hard part here is to make sure that you are honoring your boundaries. In other words, don't self-betray. No more self-betrayal. No more setting up boundaries and then allowing the boundaries to collapse. Instead, being able to confidently hold the space of your boundaries. So as an example of that, what does that even look like? I will talk about this in my own experience first. For years, I've been setting up my own appointments and managing my own calendar. I don't know why. I'm, well, I do know why. I'm kind of a micromanager about my calendar and I really get spun up if something goes sideways in my calendar. So I just have always figured I'll just manage it myself so that I'm the only one to blame if something goes wrong. But about three months or so ago, I really got a strong guidance to not schedule my appointments anymore, to hand that off to one of my trusted team members. Brandy does a wonderful job with my tech. And some of you who have worked with me have been interacting with her. And so I handed off my scheduling to her. Everybody knows this. All of my private clients know this. And I had somebody reach out to me today on a text message and ask to schedule. And I had to say, go to the link that we sent you and schedule there, please. In the past, what I would have done is to say, okay, I'll go ahead and schedule it, even though you have a link and next time I want you to use your link. Instead, I really held my boundary on that. And it was hard. 
I still had that sense of, well, what if she's mad at me? Isn't that silly? What if she's, it's an inconvenience to her? Isn't that silly? And yet we do that all the time. We set up boundaries and then we collapse around the boundaries. And so this week is a broader invitation to set up your boundaries, to know exactly what you're standing for with your schedule, with your calendar, with the meetings. I know that some of the executives I work with will say that they have strategy time blocked out in their calendars, for example. And then someone will come in and schedule a meeting over the top of strategy time. And rather than saying anything, they just kind of shrug and say, well, I guess I'll do strategy time at a different time. Well, you and I both know how challenging it is to find time in your calendar to do something like high-level thinking, high-level strategy, when there are so many fires to put out, or when you're in the weeds, up to your elbows in the, the details. All right, so setting up boundaries, very important. And with the boundaries, then we have an opportunity to get even more clear about what we're thinking and what we know for sure. Not only do we outsource our boundaries often, we also outsource our knowing, our inner knowing. I think that in our world, science has done a really good job of outsourcing knowledge. We, we refer to science outside of ourselves. Well, what does the science say about it? And there are parts, obviously, that we want to pay attention to with that. But when it comes to your inner knowing, this is a really good week after you've set up the boundaries to be able to get some quiet time inside of yourself to tune into what you actually think, what you actually know for sure. And stop referring your inner knowing outside of yourself. Stop outsourcing your knowledge. Stop outsourcing your cognizance, your ability to just know that you know that you know, regardless of what other people are saying, regardless regardless of external circumstances or people who might be thinking differently than you are. And when you do that, there's a natural confidence that rises up as a result of you trusting your inner knowing. But the first thing that you have to do in order to be able to start trusting your inner knowing is set up the boundaries so you've got a clear space around you so that you are crystal clear on what you hold precious and dear, what your values are, so that you can begin to hear your heart's voice or the voice of your soul. It's in there. It's in there. It just has gotten clouded by all of the other opinions, all of the other musts, have tos, responsibilities, duties, obligations, other people's needs, other people's agendas. And all of that stems from being raised in a culture where, especially for women, sometimes for men too, there's very much be a good kid, be a good girl, be a good boy. And when you get programmed into that as your default identity of be a good girl or be a good boy or be a good person, when you get programmed into that, it becomes increasingly more difficult to tune into what you actually think because now you are outsourcing or you're overriding, I should say, your own inner knowing for somebody else's agenda or for somebody else's desires. And then the last thing that is coming through for this week for all of us is around discipline. I know, discipline, discipline. What does that even mean? I don't mean being so hardcore micromanagerial around your life. But what I do mean by discipline is to take your promises to yourself seriously to show up for yourself, to show up for your values, to show up for your vision, and to do so consistently in a committed way. In other words, I think this week, in terms of discipline, what we're looking at is 
after I set up my boundaries and after I get a clear sense of what I know for sure, now it's my responsibility to be disciplined enough to take action based on what I know for sure. To not acquiesce my knowing, to not acquiesce my boundaries, but instead to stand firm in them. And that takes discipline. It takes mental discipline. It takes emotional dis discipline. It takes spiritual discipline, sometimes physical discipline to do that. When it could be so much easier to just scroll through social media, when it could be so much easier to sit on the couch and watch Netflix. Instead, tuning back into what do I know for sure and what's my next step? Those are really excellent questions to ask when you're on the quest for boundaries, when you're on the quest for discipline, for, for your inner knowing, reclaiming your inner knowing. And then to take aligned action that's consistent with what you hold precious and dear, that's consistent with what you know for sure. If I know something for sure about where I'm meant to spend my time during my workday, if I know for sure that if I commit an hour of my time to high-level strategy, that will move the needle on several projects. If I know that, but I don't have the discipline to follow through with that knowing, to actually take action based on that inner knowing, it's a form of self-betrayal. And it leads to procrastination. It leads to self-doubt. leads to insecurity. It leads to recreating the same cycles, the same gerbil wheel you're in currently. So I never ask to make pinky swear promises to me. I want you to make a pinky swear promise to yourself that you're going to tune in this week. Check in on your boundaries. Where are your leaky boundaries? Where are you outsourcing your inner knowing, looking for somebody outside of you to tell you what to do next, to tell you where to spend your time, to tell you where to place your attention, your focus, your creativity, your energy. And then give yourself the gift of discipline to pull yourself back to center and to stay the course with what you know for sure. These are the attitudes and the practices, the mindsets that are going to help you actualize your highest level potential, your next best position in the corporate space, your next best programs, offers, if you're in the entrepreneurial space, self-actualization comes out of self-awareness. And the more time we spend with ourselves working on and focusing on the things that make us tick, the more quickly those visions that we have, those ideas that have been downloaded or have dropped into our hearts, to our minds, the sooner those actualize. And the sooner we create that new world that we want for ourselves and other people as well. All right. That's the weather report today and a little bit of a pep talk too. I can always use a good pep talk. I know you probably can too. Let me know what stood out for you in the comments. If you'd like to get on the wait list for the Actualization Academy, there's no pressure to buy anything. It just is an early notification list. Put wait list in the comments and I will certainly get you on that list. And stay tuned. There's so much more to come in the actualization zone. Until next time, see you later.